All right, it's hurricane season. And uh, after we had Tropical Storm Alberto roll through Texas, and now that it looks like Hurricane Barrel, 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 Burl, 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 whatever it's called, is headed this way, I felt like I might do a little video on how I track hurricanes. What I look at, I don't know. Tips and tricks, here we go. If you're not familiar with how I do tips and tricks videos, this is how I do things. This is not necessarily the end all be all way to do things. So if you have comments, ways you like to do things, suggestions, help, yada, 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 leave it down in the comments below. Um, as always, if you think this information is useful, share it, share it. Okay, before I get started, a quick little background about me. So I went to the United States Merchant Marine Academy. I spent 12 years as a merchant mariner working on board ships. I've circumnavigated the globe and the two websites that I use that I'm gonna show you in this video and the information and how to read it and how to understand it, this is all stuff I gain from that career as a merchant mariner. You know, it's one thing to have to deal with a hurricane or a hurricane-like storm while you're on shore. It's a completely different thing when you're sitting on a 300, 600 thousand foot vessel in the middle of the ocean. Um, personally working down in the Antarctic, average weather for us was 10 to 12 foot seas, 30 knots of wind. Down there basically once every three months, we would go through the equivalent of a tropical storm. And in my career down there, the worst storm that we ever went through, uh, we figured the waves were in the 50 foot range. The, the anometers, the wind reading instruments on the boat, they quit working at around 85, 90 knots. Uh, we figured that the wind was obviously a lot stronger than that. We just don't know because we didn't have any way to read the wind. So yeah, I've taken ships through the equivalent of hurricanes. It's not fun. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my thoughts on evacuating stuff at the end of this video. But anyways, let's jump into it and we're gonna to turn to the computer. Okay, so the first website that I'm gonna share with you guys is the National Hurricane Center. So just type in Google. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you can check that out too. Click on National Hurricane Center and you can kind of see what's going on in Atlantic. And as you can see up here at the top, you've got the Eastern Pacific and the Central Pacific. We're gonna click on barrel, barrel. Um, this is the first window that pops up. It's the key messages. It's up here in the right. And basically this is gonna give you uh, a, a quick synopsis of what this hurricane's doing. So tropical, you know, tell you about the winds, tell you about the forecast, um, kind of give you some basic information of what's going on with the storm. And as you can see above the messages, there's a bunch of different graphics. There's a few of them that are in Spanish. So we've got wind speed probabilities um, right here, wind time of arrival, right there, wind history, um, warning cones and graphics, and then the warning cone, warnings, cone, static images. So this is probably one of the more familiar pages you guys are used to looking at or seeing on the internet, on the internet seeing out in media. So we've got where the storm is, where it's predicted to go, um, and then you got your one to three day and your four to five day synopsis of the storm. In terms of graphics, like this to me is, is one of the more important graphics that you need to be, a, be aware of. So if we come up here underneath where it says Hurricane Barrel, you'll see home, public advisories. So these public advisories are just kind of a breakdown of watches and warnings. Um, you see up here, it's got a summary. Now it's got watches and warnings. And then there's gonna be a discussion and outlook, which is just gonna be a breakdown of what they're seeing and what they think is gonna be happening. And then hazards affecting land. And then when you can expect the next advisory. And then down here at the bottom, you see you got the forecaster's name. Um, next, we're gonna look at the forecast advisory. This to me is one of the more important things to look at. So this is gonna have if you get really nerdy and you want to start plotting things, it's going to have Latin long, 
uh, positions and they are going to be in Zulu time, not in local time. Um, <clears throat> but it's going to have, uh, this is going to have, you know, different forecasts for wind where it's going to be based out of and kind of give you an idea of, of, of the winds and where they're going to be at. So it's just a little more in depth, um, look at what's going on these, these forecasts come out every six hours they will um like when when i was in hilton head during hurricane matthew they will ramp them up they will start kicking them out uh, especially if they know they're going to hit landfall somewhere in the u.s so okay so then the next page to look at here is going to be the discussions page and this is just like in the public advisory this is just a breakdown what the forecaster that put this report together thinks is going to be happening with this storm most of this information is also disseminated in that key messages graphic. So like all of this information in key messages is going to be in the key messages graphic. Crazy. I know. So the reason that I watch the National Hurricane Center and I pay attention to that is because any app, blog, website, news station that you go to get your hurricane information from, this is where they're getting their information from. This is unbiased. It's just data. It's just it's just data. What do you want? It's, it's just there for you to look at. Um, and to me, like it, I think you can get this information a lot faster than waiting on somebody to read through it, make their opinions on it. So personally, like I, I like this, I just like seeing the data and having it mapped out the way these guys do. And I think they do a fantastic job. Um, if, if you guys, know about the hurricane hunters, the C-130s that drop buoys into the middle of hurricanes. This is where their data goes. This is where the hurricane center gets their data. So these guys are flying C-130s into hurricanes to get data. Fun fact, I have a classmate from Kings Point that flies one of those airplanes. <laughs> okay, the second website. Now, if you're an offshore fisherman, this is a good website to pay attention to, especially, more importantly, if you're in the Atlantic Fortunately for you guys over in the Gulf of Mexico, the website I'm about to pull up does not help us out a ton. So this website is the Ocean Prediction Center. There it is, OPC mobile website. So we're gonna click on that. And I don't know what that is. So we're gonna go to analysis and forecast. We're gonna click on Atlantic products. First thing we're going to see right here is an Atlantic analysis and we are going to ignore that. <laughs> so we're going to come down here to the Atlantic graphical forecast. Um, so you'll see there's four types of different graphics they have here. There's the 500 millibar chart. There's the, the 24, the, there's the surface analysis. There's the wind and wave analysis. And then there's the wave period and direction analysis. So I might have lost some of you guys. This might be the more nerdy part of this, but this is a big part of how I like to look at uh, hurricanes and try to get an idea of what a hurricane's gonna do. So first thing I'm gonna click on is a 24 hour analysis. And so if you don't know what you're looking at, you're looking at a bunch of lines <laughs> and that's what it is. So the, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best. I haven't uh, had to really think about one of these in, in quite some time. So you see down there at the bottom, we got hurricane barrel. Burl. Um, and even there, they're telling you to go look at the National Hurricane Center advisory to see the latest on it. So what we've got, the H's are high pressures, the L's are low pressures, the big lines are fronts, cold fronts, high front, cold fronts, warm fronts, stationary fronts, isolated fronts. I can't remember the difference between all of them. Sorry guys. Um, but the big thing that I look for that and especially if you get really into watching these things that you'll start learning is you can watch these different systems and you can get an idea of how these systems affect hurricanes and how they're going to actually push hurricanes in certain directions. So like I said, this is the 24 hour surface forecast up there in the left. You can see when it was issued and where, when it's valid for. And then if we go over and we click on the 48, you can kind of see, where barrel is down here at the south, and you can see what this, this cold front's doing in between these two highs. So generally what you wanna see is some kind of frontal system coming at your hurricane, because that's gonna push your hurricane 
away from the shoreline unless it's you know a massive hurricane some of those hurricanes can punch through those fronts but normally when they punch through a front it also brings them down a little uh, slows them down a little bit now one of the things that we do see in this is if you look at barrel you're going to see a stick with a flag and some lines so what's really cool about this is this is actually a wind vane so if you see a triangle that's 50 knots of wind not good the long lines are 10 knots the small line is five knots so 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95. Look there, hurricane barrel, max wind speed, 95 knots. And the direction that it's pointing, so this point right here, not where the flag is, the other end without the flag, that's the direction the wind's headed in. So then you can just go through these, that's the 48, that's the 72, and you can see what the hurricane's doing. You can see how the fronts are kind of getting pushed by this hurricane system, which is not awesome. So it's kind of dictating and doing whatever it wants. So this low that's coming through that you see over by the Great Lakes with this front coming off of it, that might be something that helps keep Texas safe from barrel. We'll have to see how things play out. Obviously a hurricane going over a major landmass will also slow it down. As you can see in the 96 hour surface forecast, the max winds are at 65 knots. Hopefully it doesn't jump the Yucatan, get back in the Gulf and pick up steam. So for you offshore fishing dudes, <clears throat> here's a couple other things also helps with hurricanes. So if you look at the 24 hour wind and wave, there's the Gulf Stream. Look at that. <laughs> that green line is the Gulf Stream. Um, like I said, Gulf of Mexico, it, there's a little bit in there, but it's not as helpful for you guys as it is for the guys fishing out of the East Coast. Um, and you can kind of just watch these. And if you're thinking about going offshore, these give you kind of an idea of what's going on out in the middle. You can also look at the wave in period. So the arrows are the wave direction and then the color is going to be associated with the period. For those of you who don't know, period is the distance between two waves. You want a long period. Long period means it's just nice and rolly. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you guys on here is these 500 millibar charts. So this is your jet stream. So and if you start, if you really nerd out, you start watching this a bunch in the winter time, you'll see where this jet stream is going to have a big loop down to the south as those cold fronts come through and that Arctic blast you always hear about. That's what's pushing this. Um, so what's cool about this though, is this gives you an idea of what's going on at the upper, upper atmosphere of the planet. It just sounds weird. And you can use this to kind of, kind of, this is what you can use to help kind of get an idea of what's going to happen at the surface area. And so yeah, those are the two big websites that I like to look at when it comes time for hurricane season and tracking hurricanes. Um, the way that I view any kind of weather prediction or weather forecast or anything like that is like, I use as much information as possible. I just know that a lot of people don't know about these two websites and I hope they help. Um, when it comes to hurricanes, I pretty much stick to these two. Um, when it comes to fishing and daily weather, uh, inshore, I use uh, wind finder, windy, weather underground, radar. Uh, I use a bunch of different websites. If you guys want to like a full rundown on how I look at weather forecasting, the apps I use and how I use them, um, leave it down in the comments and we'll see. Maybe I'll do one of those. If you guys want a more in-depth look at offshore fishing and how I, I kind of plan an offshore trip and look at weather for, for going offshore, let me know down in the comments. I'll, if I do that one, I'll start talking about how to look at NOAA weather buoys and how to read NOAA weather buoys and the information you can get from those. All right, the last little thing that I was gonna talk about when it comes to hurricanes and storms and dealing with those kind of things that I think is important is, look, if you live in an area that's being told to evacuate, you need to evacuate. I've driven ships through these storms. I've lived in hurricane area my entire life. Um, and you're not going to beat some storm. You're not going to ride out some storm and save your house or anything like the storm is going to do whatever it's going to do. Uh, if you decide that you, you, you know, you might be able to survive the storm. Great good for you. Um, 
The big thing that I'd say is if you decide you are gonna stay, obviously make sure you have plenty of fresh water, make sure you have plenty of food. The things that, that a lot of people don't think about when they're gonna stay that I'm gonna throw at you right now is uh, make sure you have some kind of a chainsaw, some way of cutting yourself out of not only a neighborhood, but also your house, especially if you live like on the East Coast where there's a lot of trees. Um, make sure you've got some way to protect yourself if a tree is going to come through your house. Make sure you have plenty of first aid gear. Personally, make sure you know how to find a doctor that decided to stay behind as well. Um, I think that's just the kind of things that a lot of people don't really think about. I know when we were dealing with Hurricane Matthew in South Carolina, I started running through this list with my dad and he was kind of like, all right, you know what, never mind. Um, basically, like with, with storms like this, anything can happen. They can go from a cat two to a cat four in a matter of hours. Um, and at that point it can be too late. They can change directions real quick and you could go from barely getting hit to getting a full blast of hurricane in the face. So just be safe, think it through, make sure you're planning for honestly more things to go wrong than to go right. Cause the last thing you want is something to go wrong and you're not prepared for it and you've got no way to get help. Um, the other thing that I would say is if you are going to stay, get yourself a VHF radio and have it ready to go. Most search and rescue teams are going to be carrying a VHF radio. There's a good chance you're not going to have a cell phone. So make sure you have some kind of radio to communicate if you need help or if you just need to talk to search and rescue in the area. All right, that's it. That's the nitty gritty of it um yeah if you like this stuff if you think it's helpful leave it down in the comments below hit like hit share check out the merch shop there's going to be a slight delay on shipping for a few for a few weeks um we just moved the warehouse that has all my stuff is getting moved right now so there is a delay on shipping but it will get to you before the end of summer <laughs> before the end of july before mid-july before mid-july so um yeah, hurricanes, they suck.